Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues. And with this video, we're discussing my thoughts on episode 9 of the anime series, Plastic Memories. And we're picking up with, you know, Sukasa very much being just in a bad way. He's in a really bad shape. Um, and anyone who has ever experienced, you know, putting yourself out there and telling someone you love them or whatever, um, if that love is unrequited, of course you're going to be in a bad way. And I, you know, I question whether they should have really played it up for comedy as much as they did. I mean, it's something we can all relate to, and this series is pretty overly melodramatic at times, um, playing toward the realism of the emotion when, you know, situations aren't working out. But I guess it was a little bit better to do so because it was really fleshing out Sukasa's position in a way. Um, not so much, I would argue, Ida in this episode, who it took her the entire episode to say something I've been saying, you know, for the last several episode discussion videos. That, you know, is how she feels. She doesn't want to you know, sort of burden people around her in wanting to make them feel bad when, you know, her time is up. And not all of them apparently are aware of the fact that she only has so much time left, especially Mishiru in this episode, which that was my favorite aspect of this episode, putting Mishiru in the limelight in this such a way and really sort of bridging the relationship between she and Tsukasa she kind of lightened up in this episode a little bit and there was somebody uh going back to when the series began who was like saying she's annoying you know being the typical sundere and everything like that and you know i really never felt that way until this point because when you have that moment where she finally realizes that ira's time is limited and she's kind of opening her heart to a point to Sukasa, and they're kind of, you know, gauging each other on those steps and everything. And uh, she's, of course, mulling over the situation that happened with her father and how that all affected her life. And she's really challenging Sukasa in a number of different ways all throughout the episode. But at that point, you know, I, I really felt like there's a connection between them. And maybe it's solidifying my suspicion or my speculation that they would potentially come together in the loss of Ira to come. But then, of course, she goes full on Sunday and she's, you know, well, I'm going to cheer on your, uh, you know, relationship, your your want of romance between you and Ira to Sukasa. And she just really went overboard and that kind of did annoy me a little bit because she's too much or at least maybe the creators of the series are too much relying on this aspect of her personality and granted there is still a realism to it you know um sometimes when you're nervous you put on a game face so to speak you uh are fronting something that you're not necessarily it's not really you you know uh you don't want to seem vulnerable and that's kind of what's going on with her character but i just love the leaps and bounds that happened and unfolded in this episode between Tsukasa and Mishiru because of the unfolding drama if you will between he and Ira and I found this really interesting, too, because they get to a point where they're almost back in status quo, at least their partnership on the job, uh, Sukasa and Ira. It seems like they're still able to function and they're still able to get, you know, things moving and, and keep the workflow moving to a point, even though all of this is surrounding them. And yet you have... Kazuki, who's basically like coming in at the end and, oh, wow, shock, uh, you know, raise your eyebrows. I'm going to dissolve your partnership. Well, to me, <laughs> that moment, it was kind of like, well, they're, they're actually still able to do their job. You know, they're still they still have functionality in the workplace. Why do this now? You know, other than to give us sort of a cliffhanger, uh, really dramatic sort of way to leave off the episode. But I do almost think that Kazuki is, you know, based on how she was reacting to finding out that Tsukasa professed his love for Ida and the reaction she had to Ida's, you know, basically dismissing it, so to speak, I think this is a way that Kazuki is trying to prompt Ida to really take into account how much Tsukasa matters to her. And I think that's what Kazuki wants. I, I think we're supposed to be left with the impression like, you know, Kazuki doesn't want to see them coming together. But I think that's actually what she wants. And um, because she too, you know, she was Ida's partner. And I think she still, there's a holdover of protectiveness, of care and concern for Ida that, you know, goes all the way back to that. Which is why, if you think about it through the course of the series, I mean, every opportunity Kazuki has had to get up in <laughs> Sukasa's face about, 
you know, managing himself well around Ida and everything like that, and them living together, you know, it's almost like she she's not instigating this every step of the way, but she is overseeing it and she is seeing you know how everything is unfolding and she is trying to now influence i think you know it's just my speculation but i think she's trying to influence ira to really take into account things that matter to actually instead of dismissing her own emotions and dismissing her feelings for her friends her co-workers and sukasa especially she wants to see this giftia embrace that and actually feel a level of happiness in her final moments and, um, you know, to cap it off, we had the just hilarity ensuing with basically uh, Eru opening up her apartment to Ida and dressing her up in the bunny costume, the jammies, I guess, um, arguably, and then she's in the Playboy bunny outfit herself, and we don't want to know what was going on the rest of that night, or maybe some of us do, um, <laughs> you know, but of course then Mishiru uh, fell asleep after talking to Tsukasa, and that's another aspect of, I, I like the closeness that was burgeoning between Mishiru and Tsukasa in this episode, that was really the long-standing aspect that stood out to me throughout the course of this episode, because Tsukasa needed a shoulder to lean on, and who better than really the only other person in the series who feels for him, in in a sense? Um, you know, I, I am beginning to call into question just how much Mishiru does feel for him. Would she ever be brought to the point of, you know, air quotes, confessing her love for Tsukasa? I don't know. I call that into question, but I could see them, if not becoming romantically involved by the end and in the loss of Hydra and everything like that, I could see them becoming the closest of friends in any case because of how much they really have in common. And, you know, uh, if basically Mishiru could just get over this idea of bravado, of not trying to seem too overly vulnerable and not letting her real emotions show from time to time as she does. But that was a great aspect of this episode. And, of course, we're moving on and we'll see what happens with the whole dissolving of partnership air quotes that Kazuki's trying to put into action. But again, I think she's trying to make Ira appreciate the emotions she has, the friends she has, and maybe the love she has for Tsukasa. And we'll see what happens. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of episode 9 of Plastic Memories, if you've seen it, and where you think the story may be going from here. No spoilery material, please, uh, you know, based on the origin material, if you happen to know the way the story's going to be playing out ahead of time. But yeah, otherwise that'll be it for me, and I hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.